It's now time to go ahead and check out and set in the crank. So um, unlike the cam, we are actually going to be setting the crank in place uh, so that we can get our other measurements and uh, make sure everything is cleared and what have you. We've already set the um, bearings in place here, um, just like you saw with my other Mopar LA build, right, where we're just making sure these little notches are on the right and proper side, making sure they follow along here so that they don't spin out, okay? Additionally, you're going to see us put the caps in place and the caps will be placed back in order directionally, okay? And of course, don't forget that just like your other Mopar big blocks, right? This is one of your main bearings right here in the center. So it gets treated, and as you can see, it's a little bit different than the other ones that are here, right? So your twos and your fours are nearly identical. Your ones and your fives are different, and your three is different. And um, so we're gonna go ahead and get that place. Now, when we looked up what kind of clearance we should be looking for, um, our basic rule of thumb, according to Hot Rod Magazine, is 0 .001 times the journal uh, diameter. All right, so 0 .001, so one thousandth times the journal diameter. Now, there's a little bit of give and take there, right? So, um, we're guesstimating that our clearance should be approximately about um, 25 ten thousandths. In other words, um, 0 0.0025045 is what we're aiming for. Obviously, there's a little bit of wiggle room, but not much. So we're going to show you that. Now, I will let you know that Dad is pretty confident because this is a brand new crank, right? Um, that the clearances are going to line up consistently all together. But it is our recommendation here on Mike's Motorworks that you go ahead and check each one for your own assembly. Now, that was something that somebody hit me on when I was building the 349 stroker. Why didn't I show the clearances and the tolerances? Well, one reason is that that was already checked by Roger's Automotive Machine. That's one of the checks that he does. So I trusted him. Roger is a trusted mechanic and a trusted machinist. So I was able to trust that all the plastic gauging and the clearance and the tolerance work had already been done when I assembled it. But we're going to go through that process here because we are dealing with a brand new crank. Some eagle-eyed um, viewers might say, hey, on your other build, these were all shiny and like, you know, they, they nice had a nice sheen to it. However, these don't. Well, these are high horsepower bearings. So these have been additionally treated to handle those higher revolutions and such. So uh, that's why they don't look as shiny and as pristine, but there is nothing wrong with this. Um, and they are not worn. Those are from heating. You, those marks that you see there are as they, uh, from the heating process and the treatment process in order to um, uh, go through additional hardening and such for use as a race bearing. So we're going to go ahead and give them a quick little dab of lube, make sure our uh, crank has plenty to spin on. This is just standard assembly lube. Actually, AMS oil. AMS oil, good stuff. Uh, just like every other thing, other build that we use, we are using AMS oil assembly lube, lube not as a uh, purpose of promoting, but that's just what we use, um, and it's what we use at the shop for a majority of our oil changes as well. Now here's an interesting thought. If you were thinking, wait a minute, they were touching those bearings with their raw hands, ain't that going to cause it to rust? Well, the idea of not putting your fingerprints on bearings and parts goes back to when um, auto salespeople, auto manufacturers would demo their products. They'd take something out of the package or what have you, and then if they would touch it, that they would leave a fingerprint over a long period of time, right? And that's because the uh, bearings aren't designed to uh, deal with our natural oils and such on our bodies. And that was fine. But if you're installing them right away, there's no problem with that because uh, it's going to be washed away with any kind of 
uh, mechanical oils and uh, such that you would use, especially with all the zinc for the break-in oils and the regular additives they use in modern oiling, right? So there's not really a problem with that. However, if you insist on using gloves, great, have at it. If you would want not to use gloves, and that's fine. That's 100% on you. But uh, personally, we don't believe there's any problem with it. So we were okay with touching the bearings. And you'll see us do that again here shortly. There's nothing wrong with it, okay? But if you choose not to, especially when the bearing is going in right away. Now, again, if you're storing that bearing a long period of time on the auto parts shelf, absolutely go ahead and use gloves because those fingerprints will show up over a long period of time. Now we're going to give more information about the size of the uh, uh, crank and the lift and all that kind of good stuff uh, when we do the final assembly. I'm going to give you all the numbers for everything we're using, including the cam, including the head, so on and so forth. But for now, for the test purposes, we're going to go ahead and just make sure that one, um, when we get it seated in there, that we're within the right clearance. You got your plastic gauge in there? No, I'm, I'm, this is going to do the first. Okay. Then I'm going to take them loose and then plastic gauge. It. Okay. So we're doing our initial set. What we're doing right now is we're going to go ahead and get them on there. And um, we're going to put the plastic gauge in a little bit later. But what we're going to do is we're going to do an initial set to make sure it spins freely. And if it spins freely, great. That tells us that we're in rough alignment, right? That's our quick feeler test, or if you would, our eyeball test. Now, what we're going to do after that is after we give it our spin test, after everything is torqued down to spec, we're going to pull them back off again and then run our plastic gauge inside to make sure that we're good to go. But right now, we're just going to set these in. We're going to torque them down to spec. We're going to give it a couple turns, make sure there's no clearance issues. We're going to make sure it spins freely, and then we'll be able to conduct our uh, plastic gauge check. Now, note the numbers, everything is facing this side. So if you look here, we have our oil filter on this side, right? This is where our oil filter goes, right? And then our numbers line up straight with this side itself. So the one is facing that way, but the bottom of the one is this way, right? The two is up here. The bottom of the two is facing here, three, four, making sure these are all matched, making sure they're all snug, making sure that they go in properly. If they are too loose, that's an issue, right? But we're pretty confident these were all the original um, saddles for, uh, or caps, excuse me, the caps for these, um, or this block. Now, if you're asking, wait a minute, these guys look a little different than the other guys. Why is that? Well, the 340 featured a windage or windage tray. And so this allows that windage tray to be connected to the um, uh, bottom of and suspended on the motor itself. Now, a little interesting note, um, I did have a viewer comment while we were doing plastic age saying, hey, it didn't bother you guys that you were using an impact drill to seat those caps on? Well, yeah, we were just simply snugging the bolts down. We weren't firming those bolts down, right? No, you never want to do a plastic gauge check with an impact wrench because you're not sure which, where you're at. You want to use the proper torque wrenches. But you can use an impact to go ahead and just get these on a quick set. Mind you, that impact wrench needs to be on its lowest setting because you're not trying to torque these down just yet. You're going to be using that torque wrench to make that happen. Right, so what uh, Dan is doing right now is we're going to go ahead and start setting these cap bolts and we're going to be working a specific pattern. Um, again, we, you've seen this pattern before, especially with the 349 build, but basically what we're doing differently this time around is we're starting at 40, then we're going to get to 65, and then we're going to get to the recommended OEM 80. Now we're going to keep this, this 85, excuse me, um, OEM 85. So we're going to go from 40, 65 to 85. And that is keeping with the OEM recommendations per their service manual. Now, um, there is not any additional needed uh, torque-wise, even though this is going to be using and spinning at higher RPMs because the crank has been balanced. So there's not an additional setting for torque. We're going to keep that all the same across the board. Did you get your ones on the end? On number one. You got your rears on the rear? So you've already done all of them? You got number three or two as well? Okay. 
Again, notice the pattern here. Now we're doing to 65. We're starting from the inside and working our way out. So he's going to start there, come over to number four. Go back to number two. All right, coming up to number five. And then back to number one. And now we're going to final torque here. Again, we're just giving this the quick test. Everything is spinning good so far. So again, this is 85 foot-pounds. Or I'm sorry, you should be working. I just pointed to the right one. That's fine. And then your front. All right, now with all of those set, uh, now it's going to be a little sticky because the uh, assembly lube is sticky, but does it f spin pretty good? Oh, yeah. All right, and notice there is no binding, right? And we're going to give a quick uh, check to make sure that there's nowhere close that we have to worry about, but we didn't see any rubbing. I uh, don't feel any rubbing, but we're going to give it a quick check and a quick uh, look down with the light to make sure there is no binding anywhere on these counterweights. So for those concerned about thrashing, what thrashing is is the movement back and forth, or I'm sorry, back and forth of the crank itself. And there is very little movement here. I mean, if I were to push this all the way front, all right, and squeeze, and I squeeze the back side of it, I could feel a little bit, but there is minimal thrashing there. I mean, we could put a gauge on there, but really what's the purpose? That's less, that's like in the thousandths area. So the quick eyeball test says that. Do you want to put a gauge on it to see what our thrashing is? Dad's shaking his head and going, nah, we're good. So this thing is solid. It is good to go. So next step then is to go ahead and um, we're going to give it a quick spin. We're going to double check to make sure that we are not binding anywhere again. Now it's time to go ahead and check our clearances with plastic gauge. And the purpose of checking the clearance is to make sure that the right, essentially, bed of oil is in between the um, bearings and the crank journals themselves. So what we've done is we went ahead and removed caps one and five here, and, or not five, sorry, one and three. And um, we went ahead and removed the assembly loop. Now, when we do this check, we're going to have to be really careful we don't knock or move the crank as that will throw off the uh, measurement and the reading. And for this, we're going to use the red plastic gauge, not the green. Why? Because red is for the American numbers, and the green is for the not so American numbers, in other words, the metric. So you want to make sure that we're measuring in inches because this is an American motor, right? That's how they did their measurements. We do things in inches over here. So we're going to go ahead and check this. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut these two place, right? We're going to set them at the top. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put the caps back on and torque them in sequence, just like we did before, right? So we'll use that same pattern, 40, 65, 85. Again, that's 40, 65, 85 for each one. So on goes cap number three. And on goes cap number one. Oops, the, uh... There we 
will get away from you. Again, you don't want to make sure you want to make sure there's no lube on here because you want to make sure you get the most accurate reading. But you also want to try to keep these in place. That front one can be a little bit tough. You don't get straight on there right away. That's 40. Now 85. Now we'll just remove the caps. Again, we were sure and certain not to move the crank because that would move the plastic gauge, throwing off our numbers. So looking at these gauges themselves, and I'm sure you can't see it really well here, you'll notice that this side here on this side of the plastic gauge is a little bit wider than this side. That means it's a little bit tighter over here. Why would it be tighter over here? Well, we don't want the oil gushing out that side. So instead of being flat, there is a steady, tighter um, clearance as it moves from the front, the back to front. Now, looking at the center one right here, this is consistent. And we are at 0 0.00 so That's a consistent 0 0.002. So that means we are well within that clearance line because our calculated model was based off of 0 0.001 times the journal diameter. In this case, the journal diameter was 20, I'm sorry, 2.5405, something like that. Um, and so you're right within that line itself. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, we are set. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and we put those back on here because our next episode, we're gonna be looking at getting our pistons set in which means setting rings around the pistons and it means going ahead and doing the connecting rods and checking connecting rod clearances as well so catch us on the next episode thanks for watching and if you like what you see don't hesitate to click that subscribe button